Good morning, everyone. This is Bay Area Cancer Connections, Yoga for Healing and Recovery. We do a full-fledged yoga class, and um, the uh, instructions are to adjust my um, directions to your situation, to your body and your um, environment, so that this becomes your practice. So I'll make some suggestions along the lines of breathing, because breathing is the keystone of yoga. And then we'll try to breathe in synchrony with our movements. And this um, brings us into a centered place of calm activity. Well, that's what we're seeking, calm activity. So <clears throat> let's stand and come <clears throat> to the end of our practice area. Perhaps for you, that's a yoga mat that's laid out. <clears throat> you may have a piece of carpet that you've chosen. <clears throat> we'll first of all stand in mountain pose. So the toes are a little closer together than the heels. And this allows the knees to move forward and back smoothly like on a track. And then we'll examine our posture. So leaning forward till your toes feel the weight and back until your heels feel the weight. And then come into the middle and bring your knees over that point on your feet. Hands on your hips, tip forward and back, side to side and bring them to neutral. Fingertips on the shoulders, roll them up and back, open the chest, drop the hands beside the hips. Take a deep breath and draw the chin back the top of the head toward the ceiling, and then fold the arms to rest in the center. Big breath. <sighs> we'll start today with six directions of the spine with a balance challenge and with an inversion. And so the six directions of the spine begin with a forward, with a back bend. We extend the fingertips outward and point them upward so our hands are like pushing against a far wall. And then rotate at the shoulders, shift the hips forward, lift the shoulders back, and hold for a moment. Breathing into the belly and relaxing the belly. Then as we come back to neutral, we bring the hands together palm to palm and point them downward. And we'd like to bend forward only from the hips and extend the fingertips down between the knees, gently bringing the fingertips down toward the floor. You can rest your elbows on your knees if that feels comfortable for you. And then straighten the knees slightly and feel the stretch. If it's okay for you to have your head lower than your heart, gently drop the chin toward the chest. Maybe make a little nod, yes. Shake the head, no. And then bend the knees and slide the hands up along the front of the body. The forward bend, the back bend, the first two of our six directions of the spine, then we'll do the lateral bends, placing the left fingertips on the shoulder and lifting the left elbow, dropping the right hand down, sliding it down toward the knee. Bringing the hand up beside the ear, over the head, and pointing generally in the opposite direction to stretch out the rib cage and the spinal column. Again, a deep breath. And Breathe out, coming back to center. And curl and curl in the opposite side. Lifting and stretching, coming into our lateral bend. Couple deep breaths here and back to center. The two directions of the spine that are left are the twist left and right. So we take our left hand and put it on our right hip. Our right hand crosses behind, put on our left hip and use the muscles of the arms to gently turn the shoulders to the side. 
Rotate the head toward the back arm and breathe. Then release and come back to center. One more direction of the spine, right hand on the left hip, left hand around back on the right hip, gently turn to the side and breathe. And come back to center. So this is a little uh, yoga series that you can do for yourself each morning, the six directions of the spine. It should be followed by a little balance challenge. We'll do the simplest one, shifting our weight onto the left foot, extending the hands and lifting the right toe, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you didn't quite make it, that's okay. It's always okay to make yourself safe. Extend the arms, shift onto the right foot, Lift the left foot off, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and back to center. Then for our inversion, bringing the head below the heart, only do this if you know you don't have glaucoma or high blood pressure. Placing your hands on your knees, bend the knees. Slide your hands down till your elbows rest on your knees, then drop your chin toward your chest. If it's comfortable for you, reach your fingertips toward the floor, lift your hips and drop your head. So your head is well below your heart. You can hold your ankles or your toes or your fingertips can be on the floor or your elbows on your knees, whatever is comfortable for you. Then let's bend the knees and come back up to standing. And that concludes our little warm up called Six Directions of the Spine, a balance challenge and an inversion. We'll start our muscle warm ups with the water series. Water is our metaphor because it flows. And so we stack our hands and we want to flow in a circle as if drilling for water three or four times in a big circle and then pause and reverse the stacked hands in front of the chest and continue to breathe in concert with the movement. Then pause, reach out, clasp the hands, lift and lower like a pump. So the other thing about water is that it seeks its own level. <clears throat> It's always leveling itself with everything around it. And the metaphor is that we want to practice at the comfortable level for ourselves. Breathing in and out as we move. And then come to a gentle stop and allow the hands to rest beside the hips. Big breath in, full breath out. Point the hands toward each other and bring the backs of the hands together in the center of the body. Lift that, bring the palms toward the face, up together overhead and sweep them out to the sides. As if we're scooping water, lifting it, throwing it in the air. This is called the fountain. And breathe in concert with the movement. In as you lift the water, out as it sprinkles down. Couple more. You can always rest before the rest of us do. Coming back to our balanced position. Let the arms float up and the fingers curl in and straighten. Finger sprays. And then let the hands rest on the hips. And we'll do our half windmills, allowing the left hand to float up, reach up, lift your left shoulder, turn slightly to the right and float down. 
Breathing in as you raise the arm, now the right up and over, and move at your own rhythm and pace. Breathing in and turning, breathing out and turning. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll do a couple more, one on each side, and then come to a gentle stop. Examine your posture, feet, teeth, toes a little closer than the heels, knees right over the center of the feet, hips in neutral, shoulders rolled up and back, chest open, chin in, palms together at the center. Big breath in, full breath out. Let's engage the hands, interlace the fingers and turn them inside out. Bend the knees and lift, a little back bend. Then sweep the hands down, allow them to open. Sweep them around in back of you and interlace the fingers behind. Draw the shoulders back, lift the chin, a little tiny back bend. And then bring them back to center. We'll do reaching for the low hanging fruit, lifting our fingertips up toward the ceiling, draw that, that shoulder upward, feel the stretch, and then come back to neutral. Reach the right hand upward, the opposite hand, fingertips toward the ceiling, lift that shoulder, feel the stretch and come back to neutral. And then gently move from side to side. Lifting the opposite heel as you turn from side to side. Turn your head toward the shoulder that's moving back. And if you like, breathe in all the way around and breathe out in the opposite direction. Whatever is comfortable for your breathing. Continue for a moment or two or stop if you need to, whatever you like, and bring the hands to the sides, to your hips. I'm going to gently rotate the hips in the hula stretch, around in an oval, out above each heel and back. And then we'll pause and reverse the motion. and come to a stable, comfortable stance. We're going to place the hands on the knees now and slide them downward, squeezing the thighs just above the knees with the hands, and then gently leaning forward until the back is flat like a tabletop above the floor. Then sway the knees from side to side by rolling up on the inside of one foot and the outside of the other. and then see if you can make a circle with your knees. You might wanna walk your feet a little closer together so the knees are hugging and the heels are hugging. After three or four times around in one direction, pause and reverse. And we'll do some more forward fold stretching. The way we'll do this is to Come into that knees, elbows on the knees position. Make the back as flat as you can. And then allow the hands to hang down and swing from side to side. As we do this, you can turn your shoulders just slightly relative to the hips if you like. Only move in ways that are comfortable. Never push into pain. And any adaptation you can make to this for your own situation will be fine. Come to a gentle stop and then draw circles in the air with your fingertips. 
allowing your shoulders to fully relax. Pause and reverse those circles. And then place your hands above your knees, pushing and coming up to a standing position. We'll now combine all of our warm ups and all of our joint mobilizations in a little two step, which starts from the middle of your practice area. From the middle of the practice area, we draw an imaginary line along the front of the big toes. We step back and bend the knee and then back up to the line. And we step back with the right foot and back up to the line. So it's a little two step, as I said, back and forth, swinging the hands up. So they're parallel with the shoulders, bringing the breath in and out. And if you wish, clench the hands as they come up to the level of the shoulders and release as they swing down. Engaging all the major muscles and all of our joints in this little ringing of the bell of the great cathedral. A couple more times. And then come to a gentle stop. Let's do our neck exercises. Gently rotating the head to the left, then back to center and to the right. Keep your knees soft here. And bring the nose back to center. Let's lift and lower the chin. A little bit here. A big nod. And then tipping of the ear toward the shoulder, one side and then the other. Back and forth. Raise the hands and do a little swimming motion, rolling one shoulder forward, extending one arm, swiveling a little bit from the shoulders to the hips. And then if you like, turn your head away from the arm that's moving forward. Come to a gentle stop, place the hands on the hips, lean a little forward, a little to the left, back and to the right, moving around in a gentle circle. Trying to keep the hips as still as possible here. Making a movement through the spinal column. Then coming to a gentle stop, let's move in the opposite direction. And then let's lie down on our backs, on our practice um, area. I'll change the point of view of the camera so that you can see approximately how I'm doing my stretches. I use a cushion and a folded towel to support my head and neck when I'm lying back. So coming down, hips on the floor, elbows lowering us gently onto our backs. And we'll do a little bit of stretching and strengthening for the front of the body and then work on our legs. Placing the hands on the thighs, we're gonna slide them up toward the knees, draw the chin toward the chest, curling up and then relaxing and curling down. Let's repeat. Breathing in as we curl down, breathing out as we curl up. After five, 
You may rest or do five more, four, three, two, one. Relax the hands beside the hips. And we're going to walk the feet together and do just slight windshield wipers, rolling in each direction. Knees over to the right a few degrees, back to center, over to the left. We'll do about 10 of these and you can stop at any time if you wish. Also never push into pain with any movement like this. Do less if there's anything painful. Then come to a gentle stop. We'll do our rocking, gently rolling, that is rocking the lower back down onto the mat. You can see with my hands, I'm pushing downward gently and the belly, rolling the lower back into the mat and then raising it again. Let's try to do this in concert with the breath, breathing out as we push down. And as we roll up, try to synchronize with your breath, whatever your breathing rate and rhythm. And then come to a gentle stop. Lift your right knee and cross over your left. Allow your knees to roll to the right and then back to the left. So a little more vigorous, lower back turn from side to side with the hips fully supported a few times in each direction. And then we come to a stop and uncross, recross, the right knee over the left and gently move from side to side. And whichever was crossed earlier, we cross the opposite now. And then uncross. We'll move down to our feet. So lifting the right knee, interlace the fingers behind the right thigh. And then noticing the foot, rotate the ankle, circle the ankle in the largest possible rotation. You can straighten the knee to some degree if you like. Pause and reverse that rotation. And then extend the foot up toward the ceiling, place the hands beside the knee and draw the knee back toward the nose. Feel the stretch along the back of the thigh. Keep the knee soft so there's no sensation there. Draw the toe toward the knee so that the thigh, the calf muscle is stretching. And then gently bend the knee and place the right ankle on the left knee. Using the palm of your hand, push the inside of the right knee gently away from the nose. Don't tweak the knee, but feel the stretch in the hip. Stay there if you wish, or make this stretch more vigorous by placing both hands on the left thigh, lifting the left foot and gently interlacing the fingers behind the thigh. And you can draw your left knee and your right ankle toward your nose. After two or three breaths, let go and uncross. Shift the hips to the right. Roll over to the left side of the body with the left hand underneath the head for support. Using the right fingers, reach down toward the right heel. So we have to lift the knee and the ankle of the right foot. Touch the right heel with your fingertips. And then if it's possible, slide your hand around the front of the right foot. 
then gently rotate the right knee so it's over the left, stretching out, pointing the toe away from the hip. And after three breaths, let go, rolling back to your back, shifting your hips to the center and lifting the left foot. Then we start again, rotating the left ankle, circling the ankle in the largest possible range of motion, pause and reverse. And then stretch the foot toward the ceiling, place the hands beside the knee and gently draw the knee toward the nose. This will stretch out your hamstring muscle along the back of the thigh, feel the stretch, keep the knee slightly bent, hands along the outsides of the calf muscle and draw the toe back to stretch the calf. Then gently bend the knee and place the right ankle on the left knee. Use the palms of the hands to rotate the left right knee away from the nose. Feel the stretch in the side of the right hip. Bring the hands together in back of the left thigh and gently draw the thigh toward the nose if you want more of a stretch. This is optional. Then release, move the hips to the left, right, roll over to the left side of the body, hand under the head for support. Use the left fingers to reach down toward the left heel. Heel and knee and hip are at the same level off the ground. If you can, slip your hand in front of your left foot and draw your left, your, sorry, your right foot and draw your right heel toward your right buttock. Rotating the knee close to the other knee for a stretch, pointing the underside foot. And then release the runner stretch and roll back to your back. We'll do some full fledged back stretching, sliding our hands up and placing one hand on each knee gently rolling from side to side. See if you can keep your shoulders rolling along with your knees so that your whole spinal column is moving together. And then draw the knees in on the right side and let them float away on the left. Circles in the air with the knees. <laughs> After three or four, Pause and reverse those circles. And then with the back fully warmed up, place a hand behind each knee and gently pull the knees to the belly chest and lift the chin toward the chest, nose toward the knees, knees toward the nose, gently rocking from side to side. Release and come to your back. Knees are bent, feet are flat, palms are beside the hips. We're gonna just do a little lift and lower. Rotating the lower back fully down toward the mat and then lift the hips and breathe in. As you lower the hips back, allow the lower back to fully come in contact with the mat and breathe out as you rock the hips gently toward you and lift, and then bring them down and gently rock them away. Lift and breathe in, lower and breathe out. So this combines a little dynamic bridge from yoga with the pelvic rock. And come to a gentle stop. We're going to stretch out, toes toward the ceiling, fingers toward the up overhead, elongate the spine, point the toes away from the hips, 
fingers away from the shoulders and then gently flex elbows, wrists, and heels, ankles, and come back to a complete length, full length rest for a moment. We're going to come back up to our standing pose. So making your way up, perhaps rolling to the left and pressing into the floor, holding yourself for a moment to make sure there's no dizziness, moving your head support away and coming back to our standing pose. We'll do our classical yoga poses. Starting with our mountain, tree, and bird series. So mountain is the position that we use, the palms together at the center of the chest, standing with our weight even on both feet, centered front and back. Knees are slightly bent, hips are in neutral, shoulders rolled back and open, palms together. We're going to extend the palms outward, facing downward, and then shift our weight onto our right foot, bend the left knee and rotate it out, bring the toe down, and see if you can move the heel close to the right ankle. In the kickstand pose, we stand with the heel against the ankle and the toes against the floor. The knee is pointed out to the side. The kickstand pose. I just got an error message. I, I hope I haven't messed everything up. Let's do some gentle warm-ups here. See if we can get the video back. Then we'll try again. So hands out to the sign, shift up onto the right hand, lift the knee and rotate. Finger, uh, toes down, heel against your ankle, then palms together at the center of the chest. Moving the hands from side to side, feel how that influences your balance and lift your hands straight up the center line if you can. Bring the hands to the level of the face or above the head if you like. And then as you wish, if you'd like to try the option of placing the bottom of your foot along the other calf, holding the tree pose for a moment, and bringing the hands out for balance and stepping forward with the foot that's been in the air, bend forward from the hips, lift that back foot up off the floor and place it back lifting as you breathe in and lowering as you breathe out. Back and forth. If you like, you can hold a bird pose in its static form or move back and forth in the dynamic form, whatever is comfortable for you. And then let's come back to our mountain pose. We'll do our mountain, tree, and bird on the other side, palm to palm, the center of the chest. Check your mountain pose, fully extended spine. Let's come into tree, <clears throat> bringing our hands out, lifting our right knee now and rotating outward, placing the toes on the floor, the heel on the other ankle, hands back to the center of the chest for our balance. 
bring them in front of the face or overhead. <clears throat> and then using that balance trick, moving the hands from side to side, if you wish, bring your balance and lift your right foot to rest on your left inner lower leg. Bring the hands down and out for balance. Step forward on that right foot. Rotate at the hips. Hands down and then back. Lift and lower. One more time. Coming into bird. And again, you can do this as a static pose or do the dynamic form where we lift off the left, the back foot, lean forward and fly, and then come back to the perch. And one more time, let's come back to center. <clears throat> Let's do a little bit of loosening. We'll try our six directions of the spine. A little forward fold with the hands on the hips, folding only from the hips, feeling the stretch in the back of the legs, and pointing the hands down, placing them above the buttocks and doing a little back bend, supporting with the hands, pressing into the lower back, and then a lateral stretch, hands on the fingertips on the shoulders, Lift the left shoulder, elbow, come back to center and lift the right. And then cross body strikes. Moving from side to side, extending the arm out at right angles. Let's come to center. We'll do a little more shoulder stretching. So bringing the fingertips to the shoulders, we're gonna roll the shoulders by drawing a circle with the elbows in the air. Lift up and back, down and forward, like rowing. And then pause and reverse the rotation. Open your arms out <clears throat> and gently wrap yourself in a hug with the left arm underneath the right. Fold the fingers in to touch the shoulders. Lift, breathe in and look up. Lower, breathe out and look down. Lift and look up. Lower and look down. One more time. And then uncross the arms and allow them to rest at the hips. Shake out the hands. Stretch out to the side. Wrap yourself in a hug in the other direction. Lift and lower, breathing in and out. After three times, uncross. Let's work on our warrior poses. We know that warrior one has the hips forward. Warrior two has the hips parallel to the center line of the practice area. So we'll do warrior one to start. Step forward with your left foot and keep your feet in a nice triangle. We're going to interlace the fingers, keep the front knee slightly bent and lift the arms, straightening the elbows, rotating the hands upward, bring the arms close to the cheeks, or if possible, up above the ears. Breathing deeply.
And then gently bringing the hands down, separate, rest on the hips and step back into mountain pose. Step forward with a right foot, keeping the hips right angles to the center line of your mat or practice area. Bring your hands together, keep your front knee slightly bent. Bring the elbows upward till the upper arms approach the cheeks. Or if you have that much flexibility, bring them close to the ears. Coming down, separating the hands, stepping back into mountain pose. Now we'll try getting into our warrior two pose. That was our one version of warrior one. So for warrior two, again, stepping forward into a wide pose. So the front foot is well in front of the back. Now in this one, we wanna be careful of the alignment of the front knee. So we point the toe forward and we let the knee come toward the toe until it's over the ankle. Then we bring the back heel inward so that the hips are parallel to the center line of the mat. Then we bring the hands up over that center line, pointing the back hand straight back and the front hand straight forward. We rotate the head to look over the front fingertips. Keeping the alignment. Toes, knee, hip. Opposite hip, opposite knee. Back toe turned out. Holding the pose a little longer than seems usual or normal for you. And then I suggest dropping your hands so that they both touch your thighs and stepping your feet together a little at a time, turning back so that the hips are perpendicular to the center line of the mat. Let's do a little sun breath, breathing in, looking up, drawing out, looking down, lift and breathe in, lower and breathe out. Then we're going to step forward with the right foot, back with the left, heel in, so we can turn our hips to the side. So the hips are now parallel to a line running down the practice area. I'm going to bring that back hand up, bend that front knee over the ankle, lift the front hand so the arms are pointing along the center line of the mat. And we're looking out over the right fingertips, breathing. Holding the pose a little longer than we usually do, challenging our arms, noticing our alignment. The front toes should be pointing toward the front of the mat the knee over the ankle in the front, the hips aligned with the arms and shoulders, and the back foot heel inward, toe pointing out. And then gently drop the hands to rest on the thighs. Step forward and back till you come to mountain pose. We'll do our strenuous pose. So for this one, the feet are evenly placed about a foot's length apart. We bend the knees, shift the hips back, and continue to squat as we raise our arms beside our ears. 
Then pointing the fingertips upward, we hold the pose, puffing deeply. <sighs> Holding the pose a little longer than you usually might, as if seated in a chair, but with no chair in the vicinity. And then gently rotate back at the arms and stand. Coming into our upright pose and gently doing our universal centering, drawing the spine in a nice long extended. axis to turn from side to side. Coming up on one toe, if you like, to relieve any tension in the lower back. And then let's work our way back to our Savasana position, lying down supine on our back with our, with our support. I'll try to block out the camera completely so that it doesn't know I'm moving. I don't know if that's going to work. This is the first time I've had that error message. So possibly it'll take a little while to stabilize. And then we'll come lying on our backs to start our deep progressive relaxation series. The progressive relaxation begins with the knees together bent and feet flat. The arms are extended out to the sides, the palms are up. We're going to lift our right knee and cross over the left, and then move the knees to the right and the head to the left. Turning along the axis of the spine, one way to do this is to breathe in deeply and extend the spinal column. Breathe out fully and allow both the head and the knees to turn to the side. Breathe in, extend. Breathe out and twist. When you come into the full expression of the pose, pause for a moment, take a couple more deep breaths if you like. And before coming out of the pose, tighten the belly muscles to ensure the full support of the back as you come back up. Uncross the knees, feet are flat, knees are bent. Arms to the side in the T lift, the right, left knee and cross over the right. Breathe in and extend the spine. Breathe out, nose right, knees left. Breathe in and extend. Breathe out and rotate. Breathe in, extend. Breathe out and rotate. Continue to breathe as you come into the full expression of the pose. And then tighten the belly muscles and bring the knees back to center, uncrossing and stretching out, bringing the hands in beside the hips. And for the next few minutes, we'll tighten the back body and then the front body, then the muscles of the upper shoulders and the face. So to start with, we'll tighten the whole back body, make fists with both hands and place the, the thumb upward as you push the palms of the hands or the edges of the hands down into the mat, press the elbows down, push the back of the head down into your head support, point your toes upward, push the heels down and lift your hips, draw your shoulder blades together and tighten the back body as tight as you can. Take a breath and then suddenly release it. Wiggle your fingers and toes. 
roll side to side, gently release any tension that's been held in the back body. Extending the palms face up, thumbs out, lift the arms, then gently draw the chin in toward the chest, look down at your toes, point your toes upward and lift the heels slightly, and then squeeze the belly, squeeze the front of the body. Tighten the shoulders, draw the chin in, take a breath and relax and release. Wiggle the fingers and toes, roll the legs and arms, roll the hips and allow that rolling motion to come to a stop. Curl your shoulders upward toward the ceiling and then press the shoulder blades into the floor. Draw the shoulders up toward the ears and then scoot the shoulders down away from the ears. Roll the head gently from side to side, back and forth, and consciously release any tension throughout the body that you find. Take a little breath and puff out your cheeks. Let that breath go and suck in the cheeks. Open the mouth and let in the air. Squeeze the facial muscles all together toward the nose. Pucker the lips up, draw the cheeks in, frown the brow down and squeeze. Take a deep breath, relax and release. Let all the air go and then take a deep breath again. As you breathe in this way, drop away tension in your toes and your feet. With the next breath, drop away tension in your ankles, your calves and your knees. Breathe and drop tension in your thighs, your belly and your back, your buttocks and your hips. Take a breath and as you breathe out, relax your hands, your wrists and your forearms. Another breath and relax the belly and the back. Deep breath, let go any tension in the upper chest and shoulders, the forearms, the upper arms, the shoulder blades in the back. Relax tension in the neck and throat, the mouth, the nasal passages, eyes and ears and brain. And bring awareness to the top of your head and forward, down the front of your face, relaxing the forehead and the eyebrows, the eyelids and the cheeks, the lips and nose and chin. For a few moments, there's nowhere to go and nothing to do. Just a breathing being. Held in the arms of gravity smiled upon by the light of the sky. Then deepen your breath. Send awareness to your fingers and toes. Maybe move them in a familiar way. As you breathe in again, Bend one knee and place the foot flat and roll your hips just a bit. On the next breath, bring in the other foot and continue rolling from side to side. Moving hips to the right, roll to the left, press your arms into the floor, coming up. Find a comfortable seated position. 
possibly in a chair if that's more comfortable for you, or on your cushion and folded towel or blanket. We'll do a little breathing exercise as we end the class today. And this breathing exercise is called puff breath. We gently lift our elbows up to the level of our arms and rotate at the shoulders. If this isn't comfortable for your shoulders, it's okay to just have your hands on your knees, lean slightly forward and back. We're going to bring in as much air as possible as we lift and breathe, breathe out as fully as possible as we lower. Five times if you like. And rest your hands on your knees. Take a deep breath. We'll finish our class with the OM syllable, the traditional ending of yoga classes. Ah uh, is for creation. O oh is for maintenance. And mm is for completion. We'll do three rounds. You might um, rub your hands together a little bit if you like. Get a little tingle moving, feel the energy in the hands, and then open them, resting on the knees, take a breath, and join me for Om if you wish. together, resting the thumbs at the center of the chest. Lift the chest to meet the thumbs. Lower the chin, humbling the brain to the heart. May the practice of yoga bring healing and recovery. Finding your physical body strengthened and balanced. Finding your energy body deepened and energized, finding your mental body, heart and mind harmonized, and bringing concentration to your meditation body and full connection to your bliss body at the center of being, flowing through you compassion and wisdom. Namaste. Thank you for joining the yoga class today. May it bring you peace.